This week on Cruising New England. Today we're in Ocala, Florida to visit an old friend, Rick Schmidt of National Pods Depot. Boy, does he have some Mustangs to show us. I'm Paul Manette, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Cruise in New England and Beyond. Today we're in Ocala, Florida to meet up with a good friend, Rick Schmidt. He's going to give us a tour of his National Pods Depot warehouse, and we're going to have a look at some of his beautiful Mustangs. All this and more on Cruise in New England and Beyond. All my life, I've been cruising New England, meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Manette, let's go cruising. Closed captioning for Cruising New England on Nesson is being brought to you by New England Recycling. Waste put to work. This episode of Cruising New England with Paul Manette is brought to you by McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume Corvette dealer. Is this how your insurance company sees the value of your collector car? Hi, I'm Jim Grundy, president of Grundy Worldwide Collector Car Insurance. With a Grundy policy, the value of your car never goes down. We offer superior agreed value coverage with no deductions for age, wear and tear or depreciation. If you own an antique, classic, muscle car or even street rod, you need to learn more. Call us today or visit us at Grundy.com. Find out what's happening. Get up-to-date information as I travel throughout New England and beyond. To get exclusive information and behind-the-scenes photos, join me on Facebook. Hi, I'm Paul Manette, and I want to tell you about my new book, Collections American Style. I've teamed up with Berkshire Hills Publishing to create this beautiful full-color limited edition book. It features hundreds of full-color photographs, collector profiles, and historical tidbits. You'll see some of the finest automobile collections in the country and memorabilia from the Wizard of Oz to the world's largest Kodak camera collection. Reserve your copy today at cruisingnewengland.com. Make it McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume new Corvette dealership. While cruising New England, check out McMulkin, where there's always 250 new Corvettes to choose from. And a large selection of rare vintage classics, like this 1967 427 Tri-Power Corvette or this classic 1969 Z28 Camaro to a 1962 340 horsepower Corvette. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. We're back and I'm in Ocala, Florida with Vice President of National Pods Depot, Rick Schmidt. Glad to have you back, Paul. And it's glad to be here. Rick, when we were here before, we've had a look at all types of vehicles, from Oldsmobiles right, to Right, we've got a little bit of everything here. You certainly mm -hmm. do quite a collection. Matter of fact, over 200 cars. Mm -hmm. But what are we going to have a look at today? We're going to be looking at classic Mustangs today. You know, uh, National Parts Depot started selling Mustang restoration parts in 1979. So the Mustang is very, very integral to the success and the, and the growth of our company. And over the years, we've accumulated some really, really neat ones. What are we going to start off with? Well, we're going to start with the earliest one that I've got. It's a little 1965 uh, Honey Gold Coupe. It's just a plain Jane 200 six-cylinder with a three-speed manual transmission. Not many options after that. But this is indicative of what Ford sold the most of, you know, uh, with the Mustang. And, uh, and it's only got 1,300 original miles on it. It's 100% unrestored. It's a total type of time capsule car. So it's a nice benchmark here at NPD to see how they really built them originally. Now, when you talked about this with me earlier, you said this was a fun car. Yeah, it is a fun car to drive. People, uh, so many of these little six-cylinders have, have the straight sixes uh, pulled out and they drop the V8 conversions into them. But when it's running right, they're torquey little smooth little motors and the handling is nice and balanced and it's a lightweight little car and uh, you know with 1300 miles people go oh well, you never drive that. I've actually driven it 
on, on more than one occasion when I drive it, I drive it pretty uh, aggressively and it's just a fun little car. I wouldn't change a thing on it. I'm going to tell you something, there couldn't be many out there with 1,300 original miles on it. No, no. I, I, there's, there's a handful of very, very low mile original uh, series Mustangs out there around the country, but uh, I think this one and, and the others that exist, you can count on one hand. Now this particular color, did they make a lot of these? Honey gold, it was very popular color. You know, the, the, the green metallics and, and, and uh, these types of colors, while maybe not so popular today, were hugely popular in the 60s. I look at the interior on this and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's got the bucket seats, it's very sporty. Yeah, and all of that's all original in the interior and it's very Spartan. There's no console, there's not a lot of options in this car, uh, but, uh, but it is very sporty. It, it was what the Iacocca was trying to accomplish with the Mustang is a lot of style a lot of sport for a very meager price. You know, the whole drive line in this car basically is pulled straight out of the Falcon. And how successful was it? What, they had 22,000 on the first day? Yeah, en enormously successful. You know, it was, uh, it was a home run right out of the park. So Rick, what are we gonna see next? Now we're gonna skip to the very next uh, uh, design uh, uh, generation that uh, Ford came out with, the 1967 Mustang. And the one we're gonna look at is a car that we've also known since uh, back in the late 70s. It was the very first restoration that National Parts Depot, we used to do restorations back in the day, uh, completed. It was job number one in our restoration shop and we were able to acquire it back from the estate of the uh, owner of the car who consigned the restoration with us. And it's a fully loaded, full tilt, big block, 67 Mustang GTA 390 with deluxe interior and all the whistles and bells in a beautiful color combination. And you're very lucky to get it, aren't you? Yeah, very, very fortunate. Now this was a big jump for Mustang from, to go from that 65 that we talked about to this car. They started, they, they started making the envelope bigger to where they could drop larger motors into it. And this one has the 390 cubic inch Ford, uh, the FE Ford Edsel big block in it, uh, which uh, in 1967 was the top of the line unless you opted for a Shelby, which came with the 428. Okay, so now where are we gonna go from here? Well, I think we're gonna skip up and uh, go to uh, 1969, which was a yet another uh, design upgrade from Ford, and probably my favorite. This blue 69 Mach 1 is a car that I've owned since 1992. Uh, it used to belong to one of our old paint and body men from our restoration shop, so when I was a kid, I remember watching him drive this car to and from work every single day. And uh, it's one of my favorite colors, Acapulco Blue. What makes this car special? It's, uh, it's, it's not that rare of a Mach 1. It's a 351 four-barrel with four-speed and air conditioning. That's a desirable combination, but it's not a big block 428 car or anything like that. I would just say that it's nicely optioned. It's got the four-speed and air conditioning, fold-down rear seat. It's just got all the nice uh, options that you, would, that you would want on your Mach 1, the, the sport slats, the spoilers front and rear. It's just a sharp car, you know? Uh, that was always my motivation behind uh, obtaining this car was it was just, in my eyes, the, one of the most beautiful Mustangs that Ford ever built. Yeah, the styling is awesome. You know, you mentioned the color here. Is that a rare color? I, I, I haven't seen it that much on the, on the show scene. Not that rare. Acapulco blue is not that rare. Um, it can look kind of dull. I've seen, you know, it's one of those colors that if you, that if, uh, that if you really don't, uh, you know, sand and buff it out and really make it pop, that it, uh, that it can be forgettable. But uh, once you get some gloss to it, uh, I think it really pops. So Rick, what else are we gonna see today? Well, I've got a few more uh, of the uh, first generation Mustangs that I'd like to show you to, to finish it all the way out through the different body styles. We'll look at a couple of 70 uh, sport roofs that I've got, a Mach 1 and a deluxe sport roof, and we'll look at a 71 convertible that we've had for many years as well. Sounds great. When we come back, a lot more with Rick right here in Ocala, Florida on Cruising New England and beyond. This episode of Cruising New England with Paul Manette is brought to you by McMulkin Corvette, where there is always 250 Corvettes to choose from. Order a bunch of parts to get ready for the car show this weekend. And I got a hot deal, too. You think? Think again. Oh, man. Tired of back orders? You need NPD. With four strategically located superstores, most orders arrive within one to three business days. National Parts Depot has quality restoration parts for Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, GTO, Firebird, Ford, and Chevy truck. For your free catalog, go online or call toll-free. Do you have a child with food allergies? 
Does your school need help managing food allergies? I'm Gina Manette Lee, a nationally recognized food allergy author, educator, and consultant. I provide a common sense, fact based approach to managing food allergies at home and at school. For more information, visit foodallergyconsulting.com. We're the Hill family, and we are Imperial Worldwide. We are the largest insulation supplier in Central Mass. We specialize in insulation, vinyl siding, seamless gutters, and closet made shelving. And, and we're we are going to save you money. money. Where the hell's? I'm Lieutenant Gary Scott. Green Mountain State has beautiful sights for all to enjoy. To protect our great state, Vermont will not tolerate drug driving. Drug recognition experts are being deployed statewide to keep our roads safe. If you get high and drive, you will be arrested for DUI. Your special moments are something to remember. For weddings, portraits, and special events, contact Sparks Fly Photography. Would you like more information about the Cruising New England Car Show series? Go to our website at cruisingnewengland.com. Celebrate the Big E's 100th anniversary, September 16th to October 2nd in West Springfield, Massachusetts. We're back in Ocala, Florida. I'm with Rick Schmidt, and we're going to have a look at some more Mustangs. Yeah, we're getting up in years now uh, with the 1970s I'm about to show you. Essentially the same car as the 1969. Ford just revised the uh, fresh in the front and rear styling a little bit and eliminated the little quarter scoop that was on the 69 Mustangs as well. And uh, this is a uh, 1970 Mach 1 with the base engine, the 351 two-barrel in it. But what makes this car very special is it only has 4,900 original miles on it. And it is just an absolute time capsule, 100% original, like a brand new car, even the original tires on it. What makes this car special, in your opinion? Oh, there's not, uh, there may not be, you know, a, a lower mile or a nicer original Mach 1 out there for a 1970 as far as that goes. And I just think it's a good looking car. The white, the white body color really makes the uh, black Mach 1 graphics and rockers jump out on it. So it's a good example. Let's talk about what's under the hood on this. 351 Windsor two barrel. In 70, the two barrel 351 could be a, either a Cleveland or a Windsor and the original owner of this car spec the Windsor for, for whatever reasons I don't know. What makes the styling, you really notice that back window. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first thing you see when you look mm -hmm. at this car. Let's talk about that. Well, I mean, the fastback styling when it, in 69 and 70, they, they put in this little ducktail that was kind of reminiscent of what Carroll Shelby had going on. And just the entire style of this car with the, the hips on it, I think it's just a sexy looking body style. It's, it's got a lot more, you know, uh, muscle car appeal to it than the uh, 68 and earlier cars did, in my opinion. The interior on this is beautiful too. It's brand new. It's brand new. It still has the plastic on the seat belts. So when you're out there looking for these automobiles, you're really looking for low mileage. I'm looking for no, low mileage or, or high quality, one of the two. And it, whenever you get in between that, then uh, it, it takes a big infusion of money to get to where you want to go. What's next? Uh, next one is another 1970. Now this isn't a Mach 1. This is what Ford would have called a deluxe sport roof. And with the hubcaps on it, and and, uh, and it's a from no scoops or anything like that, you would think that this would just be your 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 normal commuter everyday car. But this was actually built for a Ford executive. It was an internal order shipped to the Ford executive garage. It has every single option that you could get on a Mustang in 1970 plus the 428 Cobra jet engine. So uh, this is really a, a factory executive hot rod, a sleeper, triple black with all of the go-fast stuff and all of the other options as well. It's even got air conditioning. There can't be many of these. This is an extremely, this is a one of one kind of car as far as the colors, options, and the equipment. There's not another one like it. We've had the Marty report done on it and it's unique. Ford only built one. So we talked about it. Can we have a look at what's under the hood? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. It's Tell been, us a It's been fully restored. And basically what you see crammed in there is uh, is all that you could get in 1970. The big 428 Cobra Jet, air conditioning. It's got the original smog system on it. So Rick, what's next? Next is another car that's been in our family for, uh, for a long time now, since the late 70s. It's a 1971 Mustang convertible. Uh, it's a, in a factory color called Ginger with a matching Ginger Deluxe interior. It looks just like kind of a plain Jane Mustang, but it's actually a well option and it's got the uh, desirable M-Code 351 four-barrel Cleveland engine in it, so it's a good performing car. 
My dad just bought this at a, at a regular car auction, wholesale car auction back in the late 70s. Um, it, it, it had only had one owner and it was so immaculately kept that the only thing we had to do was put a paint job on it because the original owner was rubbing through the factory paint from waxing it so much. And we, it, he bought it with the intent to resell it and make a little bit of money, but it never wound up finding a, a buyer willing to step up for it, so we've just kept it all these years, and so it's been with us for, gosh, you know, going on 40 years now. Another story. Yeah. You always buy these cars as a family car. I hear that over and over. <laughs> your father, you, your mother. Mm -hmm. Back in the early days, yeah, yeah. There's only a handful of cars in this collection that really date back that far, and this is one of them. So Rick, that interior is all original? Yes, every stitch of that interior is original from the from the dash pad all the way down to the carpet. We've never replaced anything on that interior and it's, and it's survived beautifully. When we come back, a lot more Mustangs and a behind the scenes look at the National Pods Depot warehouse. All this and more on Cruising New England and beyond. Still ahead on Cruising New England. We're back and we're deep in the inside of the National Pods Depot warehouse here in Ocala, Florida. Yeah, we're in the belly of the beast here. This is our main warehouse uh, for all four NPD locations. We're in California, Michigan, North Carolina, but here in Florida, this is our largest warehouse. It's a 360,000 square feet, which is more than eight acres under roof. And it's crammed full of just about every nut and bolt that you would need to restore the vehicles that we carry in our catalog lines. So Rick, we're talking about Mustangs today, and I know Mustangs are a big part of your family business. Huge part of our business. My dad started the business selling uh, 55 through 57 Thunderbird parts, but as soon as that got up and rolling, the very next big thing he saw on the horizon, and wisely so, were the classic Mustangs. So we've been doing Mustang parts since 1979, and, uh, and it's always been our, our, our most successful and largest catalog and product line. You can build an entire Mustang off of these shelves. And it doesn't take long to get these parts either, does it? From us, no. It doesn't matter if you order over the phone, over the internet, or if you just come to one of our stores and, and want to buy it over the counter. We'll have it to give it to you. If you've got a question about a product, our guys can walk back here, put their hands on it, describe it to you over the phone, show it to you at the counter. We are very, very, very seriously, we're very religious about keeping things in stock. And this place is massive, massive. How many parts would you say you had in this warehouse? Over 100,000 active SKUs, you know, it was, uh, uh, stocking items, which equates to millions upon millions of, of individual parts. Paul, I'd like to show you our large inventory too because that's so important. It's expensive to ship a fender or a hood, so a lot of our customers come to us to pick it up to save money, and that's also where we excel. We have all of that big stuff in heavy quantity here. So let's go have a look. All right, absolutely. Paul, this is the part of the building where we keep uh, all of our large inventory. This is where the shipping departments are, and then all of our receiving departments are down here. We keep the big stuff as close here as possible so we're not having to cart this heavy stuff all through the building. And you see an item like this, this is a uh, quarter panel for a 65, 66 Mustang. 
It's a big piece. It can't go in FedEx. It can't go in UPS. But technically, it is too large. They will not accept it. It has to go truck freight. Truck freight anywhere around the country runs between $100 to $175 a pop. So us having this stuff here in stock is very, very beneficial. And, uh, and this stuff is really uh, freight intensive, such that a lot of our competitors don't even want to touch it. They won't even stock it. We've got it here, we can inspect it for you. We make sure before we pack it that there's no dings, dents, or other anomalies on the part so that you're gonna get a quality part. And yeah, behind us, we've got full floors for Mustangs. And back there in those shows, we've got doors, we've got gas tanks, all the hoods and roofs, the big stuff is here at NPD. So it's on hand to where we can ship it and make sure that it's packed safely to get to you or you can come pick it up from us. So Rick, National Prods Depot is more than just warehouse and shipping. No, each one of our locations has its own phone sales department and retail counter. In fact, we've got a beautiful uh, retail counter and phone sales area here. Would you like to take a look at it? I'd like to. Well, we've seen the backside of uh, NPD and how that operates, but this is the front end. This is the retail sales uh, side where we take all of our phone orders, we process all of our internet orders, and we also have our retail counter where people walk in all day long. We've always got customers at the counter buying parts for their projects and taking them right out the door. It's not just Mustangs, though. Even though we're talking about Mustangs today, yeah. what are the other catalogs and what, what do you have to offer? Oh, we've, we, we've got Camaro parts, Firebird Trans Am parts, uh, Chevelle parts, El Camino, uh, Ford truck, F-Series truck, uh, Chevy uh, C and K series truck. you got quite a place here. As a matter of fact, your showroom looks more like a mini museum. <laughs> we also display some of our uh, collection out here to, so our customers have something fun to look at while they're waiting for us to pull their parts. Uh, one of which is a few Mustangs, obviously, since we're selling Mustang parts in it. A very, very interesting one is one that we're standing right in front of here. That's this uh, red 1979 Mustang. 1979 was the very first year for the very popular Fox platform Mustang. And if you look on the windshield right there, this is vehicle number, serial number 00001. It's the very first Fox body Mustang order ever entered into the system at Ford Motor Company. To get a number one of anything is incredible. Almost unheard of. Usually the factories hold on to those cars. Sometimes they get crushed. So it's only got about 14,000 original miles on it. It's still on its original tires, paint. Nothing about the car is, uh, has been restored in any way and it's in pretty decent shape. Now I would think that this is something you would probably never restore. No, we're not going to restore it just because it's in nice enough original condition that it's probably best to leave it be. Rick, I'm having a lot of fun. You think we could look at some more Mustangs? Yeah, let's keep going. When we come back, a lot more Mustangs at National Parts Depot in Ocala, Florida with my good friend, Rick Schmidt. When you're visiting Vermont, never drive while distracted or impaired, and always remember to buckle up. That's the best way to ensure everyone gets home safely. Make it McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume new Corvette dealership. While cruising New England, check out McMulkin, where there's always 250 new Corvettes to choose from. And a large selection of rare vintage classics, like this 1967 427 Tri-Power Corvette, or this classic 1969 Z28 Camaro, to a 1962 340 horsepower Corvette. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. Imperial Worldwide Insulation Vinyl Siding, Copper and Seamless Aluminum Gutters, Classic Made Shelving Systems, and Zero Clearance Fireplaces. We strive to make the building process easy and fun. Check out Cruise in New England Productions' website. You'll see updated information about our fun car show series, including the Magical Mystery Cruise, the Circle of Champions, the Super Wheel Showdown, and the Spooktacular Cruise and Classic. Also subscribe to Cruise in New England Magazine. We feature some of the hottest rides in the Northeast, along with event listings and a whole lot more. Don't miss a single issue. And if you want more information about sponsorships, advertising, or personal appearances by Paul Manette, email us at cruisenewengland at AOL.com. Building Maintenance Services. We've been servicing the Northeast since 1990. We service and repair revolving doors, automatic and handicapped doors. We can help you design an attractive, efficient entrance you can be proud of. Protect your investment and secure your property with yearly maintenance contracts and 24-hour service. Whether in office, medical, or commercial high-rise, we'll get the job done right for you. Building Maintenance Services.
Do you have a vintage car, boat, motorcycle, or airplane collection, along with some memorabilia? Would you like to be featured on our show? Email us at cruisenewengland at aol.com. We're back, and I'm with Rick, and now we're going to have a look at some pace cars. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of neat pace cars. Uh, the first one here is a 1979 uh, pay, uh, Indianapolis pace car. Uh, Mustang paced the race uh, for Indy in 79. And of course, as all the automakers do, when they pace uh, either the Indy or the Daytona 500, they often uh, produce pace car replicas in limited productions that go out to the dealerships for retail sale. And this is one of those pace cars. It's a turbo uh, four-cylinder, four-speed version of it. I love looking at this car, but I know you have another one you want to show me. Yeah, this is a neat pace car right here, but how would you like to see one that actually paced the Indy 500? Let's go. All right. 1994. This is 1994. It was the next opportunity that Ford had to pace the Indy 500, and they did it with their all new for 94 uh, version of the Cobra Mustang. This is one of three pace cars that were specially prepared to pace the race by Roush Racing. Uh, for the Indy 500, and there are a myriad of special features with these cars. First of all, all the pace cars were actually automatics. The Ford didn't make an automatic transmission Cobra, so Roush had to install specially built automatics in with the Cobra drivetrain for these cars. Also, it has a dual halon fire suppression system. It has a fuel cell with a crash bar built in behind it. It has uh, uh, full strobe lights in this special custom-made roll bar, which is, which is a hand-built piece, and strobes in the lights. All these modifications to allow to actually be out on the track live with the Indy cars. We've got a uh, picture of uh, Davey Allison. You can see the number one right here, so you know that it's our car actually getting in the car to drive it. Here's a picture with Allison behind the wheel and Tony George, who's the owner of the track, the Indianapolis 500. And down here, here's a picture of uh, car number one leading a parade of the, uh, of the parade vehicles that Ford ran through here. Paul, you gotta hear this car though. So this dashboard has a signature on it. Yeah, it's Jack Rogers' signature. So Rick, what are we gonna see now? Uh, we're gonna look at a factory hot rod now. This is a 2000 R model Cobra. The R model Cobras are basically uh, factory race cars that, that are street legal, but uh, not really intended for street use. Uh, no air conditioning, crank your own windows up, no power locks, no sound editing, no uh, radio, no rear seat. It's just a full out lightweight, uh, 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 competition suspension race car and in the case of the 2000 it's powered by a 5.4 liter modular four valve v8 that put out 385 horsepower so uh, so it's a real fast uh, pretty bare knuckle uh, limited production Cobra yeah obviously it has a unique hood that has a very high dome to it to fit that enormous uh, uh, two-piece intake on top of it and it's just a high revving screaming big power big displacement V8 with a six-speed uh, manual transmission. So Rick, you have another one to show me. I got one last one here. It's the, the, the newest one that we've looked at today, and it's another really unique Mustang. It's a 2004, which was the very last year for the SN95. And it's a very unique one in that this is not just a, a, a brand new 2004 Mustang GT convertible. It happens to be the 300 millionth Ford produced. So it's a, what they call a milestone car. And uh, it is also, uh, it was Ford's uh, anniversary version of the Mustang in 2004, 40th anniversary at that time, which gave it this really pretty, uh, kind of a ruby red paint with the uh, pewter colored stripes and the matching top. Beautiful car, but this particular one happens to be the 300 millionth. We've got a poster of it close by here showing uh, uh, Bill Ford uh, Jr. driving it off the assembly line. Rick, I've traveled all over the country. I've seen many, many car collections, but the uniqueness of your car collection is unbelievable. I love coming here, and I love to see these automobiles, and I want to thank you for sharing it with me. It's been great having me every time. Thank you. Always welcome. I want to thank Rick Schmitz for a great day here today in Ocala, Florida, at the National Parts Depot Warehouse in his Mustang collection. I'm Paul Manette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New England and beyond. <laughs>